Hi, and welcome back to the Sustainably Yours Homestead, where today we're going to be shining our backyard spotlight on Trifolium repens, white clover. White clover is one of the more common plants that you'll find in the yard. Most people think of them as weeds, but they are legumes, so they have this really cool ability to take nitrogen from the air and fix it down into the soil for other plants to use. So they actually make a really good cover crop for your garden or for your pasture over winter. They do this by forming a symbiotic relationship with a type of bacteria called rhizobium bacteria. Now these uh, rhizobium bacteria can infiltrate the root system of legumes and they're actually the, the organisms that take the nitrogen in from the air, but then they kind of deposit it as a nodule on the root of the plant. And later on in the season when the plant dies back, those nitrogen nodules dissipate back into the soil. They get their scientific name, Trifolium repens, from the fact that they have three leaflets on each little leaf. There's the trifolium part, and repens is Latin for creeping, and that's exactly what white clover does. Instead of growing vertically, it kind of grows horizontally. It shoots out these stolons that creep across the ground, and at nodes, they'll poke roots down into the ground and create a clone of themselves. Now, like I mentioned, what we think of as a clover with three leaves or four leaves is actually one leaf with three or four leaflets. And these leaves may be what we call trifoliate, that's three leaflets. They can be quadrifoliate, those are the ones we like to find, the lucky four leaf clovers. And occasionally you'll find multifoliate leaves, they can, that means they have five or more leaflets. You may have noticed from looking at clover in the yard that some, but not all, of the leaflets have these white stripes on them. That brings us to the edibility of white clover. White clover is said to be edible. The entire plant, from root to stem, including the flowers, is supposed to be edible, as well as medicinal. But before you just run around popping clover in your mouth, you should probably know that white clover can be cyanogenic, which means it may produce cyanide. From what I found, there seem to be studies that link those white bars or those white stripes on some of the clover to their ability to produce cyanide. In other words, if the clover has that white banding pattern on it, it can probably produce cyanogenic compounds. If it does not have the white banding pattern, then it probably does not produce those cyanogenic compounds. And as I said, um, the entire plant is said to be both edible and medicinal. It has been used medicinally as a blood purifier. Ah, that, that phrase, I see that for like every medicinal herb that I've ever looked up, I think. It says, has been used as a blood purifier. And I have no idea what that means. That's kind of one of those terms that I, I don't put a lot of stock into. In India, and this is probably uh, the, the medicinal use that I found the most scientific basis for, it is used to treat helminthic worm infections. So those are going to be like intestinal parasites. And there's actually science to, to back this one up. But it has also been used in the past to clean and dress wounds. Again, I'm not really sure scientifically how that might help. Leaves have been used to make a tincture to treat gout. They've also been used to make a tea that is supposed to help colds, coughs, and fever. Now, you can also make a tea from the flower 
it's drinkable and apparently people have also used it as an eye wash. Now I'm not going to try that one, but here in a minute we'll step into the kitchen and we'll make some, some tea and we'll try some of these leaves and see what they taste like. Apparently young leaves can be eaten raw or cooked. Older leaves, uh, they kind of apparently get a bitter taste, so you want to make sure you cook those. As a taste test, I have uh, I've found a clover. I specifically searched out a, a clover leaf that does not have the white stripes on it. So um, we're going to give this a try. Kind of chlorophyll-y. It's not bad. I mean, I'd definitely eat it in a pinch. A little bit of a sweet taste with like a bitter, a slightly bitter finish. But not bad though. Flowers are also edible. You can eat them raw or you can dry them and eat them. You can make tea out of them. I found, again, I made sure this flower came from a plant that did not produce striped leaves. They're said to have kind of a vanilla after flavor. Let's give it a try and find out. I've also read that a lot of people are allergic to clover, so um, hopefully my throat doesn't begin to swell up. If you're watching this video, that's a good sign. It means I survived. I'm not as big a fan of the flowers. Huh. It's not, again, not bad. But man, if I'm in a survival situation, I'm going for the leaves all day. You can keep the flowers. I don't know. I expected it to have more of a floral flavor, but it really didn't. But a lot of people eat them and say that they're rather tasty, so I mean, I don't know, just not my thing. You can also eat the roots. They say you're supposed to boil those. I'm not gonna give those a try. Um, Honestly, I just don't want to go through all the trouble. However, if you'll join me in the kitchen, I did go to the trouble of gathering up a whole bunch of flowers. Again, I made sure they all came from plants that do not uh, have stripes on them. It was kind of tedious. I had to like find a patch of clover that didn't have stripes. I had to find a flower and then trace it back down to make sure it came from the right plant and then pick it. Um, but I picked a whole bunch of them and I dried them in a dehydrator. So um, let's go in and make some tea. Here are my dried flowers. I'm going to take the, uh, the flower ends off of them and I'm going to crumble them onto a piece of cheesecloth. And then we'll steep that in our hot water and make some tea. Hopefully this will be enough to get a little bit of flavor out of. And here's our little tea bag. I'm gonna kind of crush it up a little bit so that we can get as much flavor out as possible. And now let's steep this in some hot water and sit back have a nice cup of white clover tea. Yeah, there's some color coming into it. If you can't see it's kind of a yellowish green. It looks almost like watered down surge if you grew up in the 90s. I'm kind of excited about that. So I didn't use all of those dried flowers for the tea. Figured I would bring a couple out and see if they taste any different once they've been dry. Uh, let's see about this. Yeah, they taste different. They don't have as much of a flavor. They're just really dry. Yeah, it's a completely different flavor. I'm interested to try this tea now. So, here's what it looks like. Here's what we end up with. Kind of a Mountain Dew color. Let's try this. It's 
not bad. That's actually not bad. I was totally expecting that to be horrible. But I'd drink that. Huh. It's very interesting. I'll tell you what. I'm going to sit back and enjoy my cup of tea. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because we'd love to see you back again for more daily sustainable living.